Hello, I'm Sophie from OffWestEnd.com and we're here at the King's Head on a very hot June morning to talk about Cat's Paw, the new play at the King's Head. And we're with Stephanie, who's the artistic director, and Noah, who is the director, producer and lead of Cat's Paw. Can you tell us a little bit more about what the storyline is and sure. what we're um, tackling? Yeah, it's a, a group of eco-warriors uh, go out and uh, use the shock and awe tactics that <laughs> we're familiar with, uh, bombing and such, to create attention to the fact that the Earth's uh, water supply, uh, the drinkable water supply, is being slowly uh, poisoned and uh, polluted to the point where human beings will not be able to have anything to drink very soon. Um, so in doing that, they go a bit overboard and uh, set off a truck bomb outside the White House and kill some senators. Mm -hmm. uh, they then kidnap a reporter uh, to get their story out there. And uh, beyond that, I think I will uh, allow you, the audience to see for themselves. Do you, would you describe it as a comedy or as a searing political I think it's a thinking person's piece. Analysis, yeah. yeah. The thing about what Master Simone that I like so much, uh, he's written plays like The Wool Gatherer, Extremities. Um, the, they're very, they, they're, they're timely pieces. This mm. play was written in, in 1986. Uh, and it has mentions terms like ground zero and um, you know so very kind of, contemporary yeah yeah it, it, he it's a, like a very prescient kind of uh, yeah. piece where he sort of said things that then happened you know it was before 9 11 it was before the Timothy McVeigh bombing but it deals with issues and things uh, all around that um, his writing is uh, is tight and it's uh, dramatic but it does allow some comic moments that aren't sort of gratuitous mm. uh, so it's just enough to sort of allow you to relax a little bit while you're getting all this sort of hardcore uh, you know, drama. So there is something in it for everybody. Um, there's four characters in it that present, um, each of them presents a different part of, of, of mm. the hero, if you like. I think one thing that drew me to it is it has an epic uh, subject matter but there's quite a lot of relationship going on. So there are two very dynamic relationships, in fact, really three, but two especially, that are extremely complicated and multi-layered, and have wit and comedy, as Noah was saying, but also are extremely moving. So, so you work with the characters, it's yeah, not just... Yeah, you, you get, it's not just um, adjectprop yeah. at all, which mm. I would never want to do. It's a, it's a fascinating, beautifully crafted play about very complicated relationships with, with uh, Victor, who is the head of this organization, mm. and his guerrilla um, woman, so to speak, <laughs> and you yes. know, his soldier, yeah. Yeah. And, and the journalists uh, they kidnap, and, the, uh, and also the um, waterboard worker they've kidnapped. So there are all these fascinating, complicated layers of relationship, and why people do these things, why they're drawn yeah. to do these things, and, and obviously it's much more than the cause. Mm. It's their own personalities and the complexity of their own personality. So yeah. that comes over yeah. brilliantly in the writing and in the acting. Yeah, and it, one of the things, the major themes of it is, is uh, what does it take to become radicalized? You know, we all have these ideas and these concepts, uh, these green issues are sort of bringing out a lot of uh, mm. inner emotions with people, and is especially with some of the other parts of the of, uh, ideologies out there, what does it take before somebody becomes, I'm upset about this issue, um, so I'm going to I'm write about it. About I'm going to do something about it. I'm going to do something. Uh, write a letter to to somebody, and then at a certain point, they become radicalized to the point where they do something extreme, like a bomb mm. or a killing mm. or something like that. And it's that moment, that step, that what does it take for somebody to become that? You know, and the different people in this play have different moments where they where they change over to that. Mm. Uh, and, and so that that is essentially well, that's absolutely fascinating. Presumably, something that that is a question for everybody at the moment when yeah. it's so easy you know one person's freedom fighter is another person's terrorist yes and, and there is this uh, complete uh, vilification of of all extremism so presumably this is an understanding of the road towards yes yes you know for somebody it could be seeing a turtle it, that's crushed on the side of the road for somebody it could be their yeah. grandmother died because their water was poisoned for somebody else it could be it could be something extreme or something simple mm. but and then and then do they take that cause that was so good and do they tarnish it So renowned for being the the first pub theater since say, Shakespearean times and the first dinner theater uh, in the UK it was founded in the 1970s and I know although I haven't experienced yet and I will that you can have dinner in the auditorium itself 
before the play begins. And then afterwards, you can go into the bar and have drinks and join everybody who's there, quite possibly listening to music. I don't know, a lot goes on in the evenings, doesn't it? Well, there's music 364 days a year, and we get some fantastic bands. Uh, Sugar Tea and the Swells is swing. Fallen Heroes is amazing. New mm. Orleans jazz, and they get up on the bar and play the trombone and the drum. And it just is a completely different atmosphere from 10 o'clock on in the bar. We also have wonderful comedy, a uh, really big lineup of comedy, and just, just we, I kind of see it as an all-inclusive event venue, mm. as well as high culture, mm. and uh, you know, it, it's kind of uh, fulfills the entire spectrum. And if nothing else, the history of the pub is fascinating too. Did you say it was Victorian? 1860. It was built in 1860, but there's been a pub on this spot since the 1500s, oh, and it's mentioned in Samuel Pepys' diary as King Henry VIII was on his way to see his mistress in the Balls Pond Road. Now, when mm. ah. he stopped for a pint, and that's why it's called King's Head. And what would you say to somebody who hadn't been to the King's Head before and you were talking to them as an audience member, what would you say? Things can be absolutely electrifying here. Over the years we've transferred to the West End and Broadway 35, 37 times and I always prefer the production when it's at the King's Head because you're so close you feel like you're looking through the keyhole at something you shouldn't quite be looking at. And actors can, they need to project because it is a theatre, but they, they can be more natural yes. and convey a huge amount mm. and it, it's just an electrifying extraordinary experience whether it's drama or comedy. So get your momentum in gear yes. and come down to the King's Head as soon as possible to enjoy mm -hmm. the uh, urban warfare and the personal relationships that yes. you described. A very there is a love story. Uh, electric, oh there's a love story yes. as well, Absolutely. there's a very electric piece then to come to see in Cat's Paw and thank you very much and I wish you every success. It thank sounds you very like much. Great.